Amen. Come on, give the Lord a male clapping offering. No, you didn't get me. I said, give the Lord a male clapping offering. He has seen you through January, February, March, every, and this is the month of grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's have our seat in his presence this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, choir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we open our scriptures in the book of Psalms 23? Remember that this year, the word that the Lord has given to us here that we are running with is the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Hallelujah. So we're continuing in that if you have been noticing, every two, two months, the first of the two months, I try to treat one verse of this particular scripture, the book of Psalms 23, verses 1 to 6. Can you help me put it up so that we can read together? One to go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Okay, I need to open my scriptures here then. Please go on. Go on. Go on reading. Okay, we didn't open our Bibles. Okay, praise the Lord. So let us get started again. So let's open our scriptures, everybody. Psalms 23. You see, that's what I always say to us. You know, you never know. Some of these things we read in, in the electronic stores. You know, the world is against Christianity. The day that they will change some things, you will not know. Please get used to your hard copy Bible. Hallelujah. So can we read together now? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Somebody say amen to that. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. But this morning, just like we have treated verses 1 and 2, we are going to be treating verse 3 this morning. And so the verse 3 says that he restores my soul. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. For his name's sake. I want to ask us a question this morning or some set of questions. Have you ever seen somebody that is very, very hungry? In fact, famished is the world. Have you seen anybody that is famished? Have you ever seen the person before? Such person will be vulnerable. Am I saying the truth? Because that such person can eat whatever he sees. In fact, such person can actually feed from his or her enemy, if that's the only way. You remember, though not direct enemy anyways, you remember the story of uh, uh, Jacob and Esau in the, in the scriptures. Because he was hungry, he sold his birthright. That's how someone that is hungry can be. Someone that's hungry is very vulnerable. The same thing. I don't know if you've seen someone that is also thirsty. Someone that is highly, I'm adding the word, highly dehydrated. They need anything liquid, especially water. And they don't mind. Of course, in some part of the world, we have seen people drinking from, you know, more than drinking from unpleasant places. Because they need drink to survive. Because they need water to survive. Hallelujah. But that has not been the portion of you. That has not been the portion of myself this morning. So why not just give God a clap of him this morning? It's not until you see those kind of people around you before you thank God. Like I've always said, you don't have to wait for the disadvantage of another person before you realize how good God has been to you. Hallelujah. So... David arrived at this verse 3 uh, because of the things that he said in verses 1 and 2. In verses 1 and 2. So 
Let's go back to that verse, verse 2 especially. Let's go back to verse 2. It says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Can you see that this correlates with what I've just explained? Because God knows that if he's going to be able to lead you, if he's going to be able to do anything for you, he needs to take care of your hunger first. And he needs to take care of your thirst. And that's why the scripture says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Of course, you know the sheep, when they go around green pastures, what do they go there to do? They go there to feed. Hallelujah. And then he leads me beside the still waters so that they can also drink. Of course, if you can trace on YouTube, you can see the message on this particular one. I took time to explain the still waters and every other thing that you have in that scriptures. Now, there's a similar scripture in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel 34. I'm going to read verses 14 and 16. I will feed them in good pasture. And their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. They shall lie down in good fold. And feed in rich pasture. On the mountains of Israel. God is so, is so concerned about your welfare. Hallelujah. What a wonderful father we have. God is so concerned about your well-being. Hallelujah. And that's why Jesus himself described himself as the good shepherd in John chapter 10. So God is concerned with everything and anything about you. God is concerned about your academics. He's concerned about your clothing. He's concerned about your spouse, about your marital life. He's concerned about your relationship. Even when you think you are most messed up, God is still interested in you. God is still interested. And what does he do? He feeds you. He brings you there because God knows that. See, God cannot take care of you. God cannot take care of me in the original state that I am without him. He can't. He needs to. When you feed, what happens when you see somebody that is hungry, very, very hungry, and you feed them? What, what happens to them? They become energized. They become refreshed. They become comforted. Same with somebody that is highly thirsty, highly dehydrated. When you give such person water, you see the person be like, ah. So before God begins to work on you, he wants to feed you first. He wants to make sure that you are in a state where he can do anything on you. So, you know, the eyes that a lot of us used to view God is the eye of the Old Testament. As if it's somebody seen now or something, God is going to stone the person to death. No. And it's because people did not even understand God at that time. There are so many terrible things that we attributed to God. God is not a wicked God. Somebody say God is not a wicked God. And that's why some people that will not believe in God will still say it's God that is causing. And some people even say it's God that brought Corona. No, it's not God that brought coronavirus. No. Some people were doing some things and that led to that. That's not God. Hallelujah. So God cares for you. He cares for you. God, he wants to feed you. He wants to bring you to that point. That scripture says, he restores my soul. And then he leads me in the path of righteousness. A soul that is not restored cannot live righteously with God. So a lot of us, we are trying to uh, today, some people will even say, and that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Some people will say, today, I will not tell lie. I will not lie today. But guess what? You are saying that from a wounded soul. At the end, what do you find yourself doing? You are still lying. It doesn't mean that God will kill you. No, God will not kill you. You are still a work in progress. I am still a work in progress. Every one of us, we are works in progress. We are works in progress. Praise the Lord. So, what God does is that God feeds you. Let us, if you can get amplified, if you can, I'll try to open it from here. I want us to look at these scriptures in amplified edition or the amplified classic edition. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 16a. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 16a. Oh, thank you. Look at this. I will seek the lost, bring back the scattered, bandage the crippled and strengthen the weak and the sick. Can you see this? I will seek the lost, bring back the scattered, bandage the crippled 
Let me look at the classic edition. You can leave this. Let me try to open the classic edition from my scriptures here. Ezekiel. And if somebody have it in, this, in, in the congregation, you may please read for me. Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel verse 16, amplified classic. Yes, please I will, read. I will seek that which was lost and bring back that which has strayed. And I will bandage the heart and the people. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. I will bandage their hearts. You know that hearts can be of two types. There can be physical hearts. There can be internal hearts. Do you know that a lot of us Christians, we are carrying hearts. We've been hurt by different situations. And we are carrying that all about every time. We are moving around with that. God is saying, I will bandage your heart. Hallelujah. So when we talk about restoration, what is God doing in restoration? Restoration actually talks about healing. What do you restore? You restore something that has been misplaced or something that is not in its rightful place. And that can be mentally, that can be spiritually, that can be physically. That can be emotionally. That can be every lee that you have. Praise the Lord. So what God is trying to do is to restore you. The process of restoration is the process of healing. It's the process of healing. And I think I'll focus more on the heart this morning. But before I go, I, I, I go into that. The challenge we have a lot of time is that a lot of us are coming to church thinking that we can get our hearts taken care of in church. I'll explain what I mean. We're thinking that maybe the pastor or the choir or somebody in the church, the mistake we are making is that those people that you are looking up to, to heal your own heart, they carry their own heart too. They carry their own heart too. I am also wounded. Just like you are wounded. Every one of us, we have one wound or the other that we are not seeing. So if I'm coming to church because I'm thinking somebody will be responsible for my heart, I am making a big mistake. It is only God Almighty. So people are coming to church thinking somebody in church will be of help to them. Making a big mistake of not connecting with the God that is in the church. You know, there is this analogy that I just want to give to us. You know, sometimes church is like a party. That has been hosted by a very big man, a very wealthy man, more or less a philanthropist. And then you've been invited to come. Either you head by yourself. There's a name we call those people where I came from. You know, <laughs> I, I will say so that some, some people can understand. <laughs> like I head and I branched. <laughs> you know, there are some of those people in church too. It, it could be that someone invited you, or somewhere, somehow, maybe the, the host of the party reached out to you. But there is one thing. When you get to a party, there are a lot of activities going on in the party. You see people dancing. You see people, some people are just there. They, they dress in a classic way. You see people gisting. You see people serving. You see people making noise. You see people doing different. You see decorations. You see a lot of things. Do you know that a lot of us that come to church, every time our focus are on those things. We never try to meet the host of the party. And when you don't meet the host of the party, you don't get recognized. You don't get ministered to. You don't get, nobody serves you. Have you ever been to some party that they are looking at the highs? They are looking at those people like this. <laughs> I've attended parties. Though. <laughs> if you see me, I don't attend parties in Sydney. <laughs> Maybe I know why. <laughs> you go to some parties like this, they look at, no, no, don't give them food. They're just looking at them. You know, because they didn't know you or because you were not invited by the host of the party. Unfortunately, the same thing is, is like the situation in the church. You come to church, you never get to meet with the God of the church. You are carried away by the dancers. You are carried away by the dresses. You are carried away. You forget that those other people that you are seeing, they also came on their own. Every man for himself. Every man for himself. It is towards the end of the party. Sometimes you realize that, oh, it's like I came alone. No, I'm on my own. Sometimes it is also like that in the church. 
it is also like that in the church. So try. Because sometimes, most of the times, you don't get saved. And sometimes, some of us even get ourselves involved. We get along with the activities. You look at those dancing, you like those dancing, you join them. Then you start to dance. And then they dance with you too. Or you look at those people serving food. You say, ah, I like to serve food. Then you get there and know that. Sometimes genuinely because you just want to serve. And sometimes so that you can be seen. I'm talking about the church. I'm just trying to liken it to a party. So some people serve in church, in the choir, in different places. So that they can be seen. Why some people are serving there genuinely. But either of them, they are yet to meet the host of the party. So such service, the host of the party will not recognize it. In fact, in the reality of it, the host of the party can say, who is that person? Tell him to drop that thing. I don't know. Him. I don't know. Her. I pray that that will not happen to us in Jesus' name. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, he says, not all that call me Lord, 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 he says, I will tell them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. For I know you not. But that's not the message for this morning. The message is that you have come to church. Meet with the God that is in the church. He is the one that can heal your heart. He is the one that can bandage your wound. As you are carrying a wound around, as you are carrying whatever thing you are carrying around, whatever body you are carrying, the only person that can help you out is God that is in the church, not the people in the church. The best you can get from the people in the church can only be near perfect. It can never be perfect. Because if I give you my car, if I have 10 cars and I give you one, one day I'll tell somebody, ah, you know, I gave him that car. It's not near, it's not perfect. It is only God Almighty that can give you things and not check it again. Hallelujah. It is only God. So let your focus be on God. Nobody is perfect in the church. That's why those people, maybe where you are dancing together, because you joined the dance, because you felt that that's the way you can function. That person can step on you where you are dancing. But if you have not met the host, you will walk away now. You say, ah, how can this person step on me? Forgetting that that person is also struggling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, focus on him. Back to that Amplified Classic Edition. God is the one that can bandage your heart. No other person. Is the one that can take care of your pains. Is the one that can take care of your wounds. Stop focusing on people. Stop focusing on the pastor. Stop focusing on the workers in the church. Stop focusing on other members of the church. All of us, we all came so that God can help us out. So let your focus be on God. Like I said, hearts can be outwardly. It can also be inwardly. And those of the inward ones, oh, they are the most terrifying ones. They are the most terrible. They are the most, most painful ones. Let God heal you. Don't pour your heart on other people. It won't work. You won't get healing through that way. You won't. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Allow God to heal you. That is what restoration means. Imagine you are suffering from an heart, you are carrying a heart all around and you want to perfect righteousness. No, it can't work. It can't. Please put that scriptures back. Psalm 23 verse 3. It can, he restores you first before he by himself leads you. You don't try to work out righteousness by yourself. You, No matter how much you try to work it out, you can't get it. It is God. So he restores you first. And then he begins to lead you in the path of righteousness. Why? Because of his name. Because you carry his name. So God does not want... You think you don't want to be embarrassed? God does not want you to be embarrassed. You think you don't want to be disgraced? God does not. He does not for one second want you to be disgraced. But a lot of times, because there is ego clash between us and God. 
When God is working on us, we are telling God, no, God, I'm not ready now. This is the way I want to do it. You're, you are too smart for God sometimes. You know much more than God sometimes. And that's why some of us stay too long in our challenges. Because God is telling us to go this way. He said, no, God, no, I will not go that way. I, I have to do this way. I saw somebody last year. This is the way the person did it. Hallelujah. Are you crippled? Are you incapacitated? Are you unable in any way? God is ready to help you out. God is ready to help you out. Are you weak? Are you struggling? Are you sick physically or, or internally or spiritually? God Almighty is ready to help you out. He's ready to help you out. There is a but, like I said. It is only if you are willing. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you will do what? You will eat the fruit of the land. If you are willing and obedient. If you are willing and obedient. And like I said, the process of healing, the process of restoration. You know, we see some words in the scriptures. It's always the one you are studying scriptures. Take a pause sometimes and look at those words again. Restoration is not something easy. It's not. You think it's easy in, I think, um, either First Samuel chapter 30 or Second Samuel chapter 1. I think, yeah, it's First Samuel chapter 30. When David went to fight, and before he came back, the Amalekites, they've taken everything that he has. The Bible says he wept. They wept till they could not weep anymore. In fact, his, his uh, army officers, they took stones. They wanted to stone him. What kind of a leader are you? So restoration is not an easy thing. When you are not in your rightful place, you are not comfortable. That's why if you are trying to be righteous for God at that time, you're only deceiving yourself. You have to be restored first. And so that process can be a painful process. It can be a process of correction. It can be a process of telling you to stop doing things the way you have been doing it. It can be a process of even God telling you sometimes to resign. Do you know there are people that God will tell them, resign from your job? It depends on how much you are close to the host of this party. Because if somebody, if God is telling somebody, somebody is saying, no, that must be the devil speaking to me. That's not God. It depends on how close you are to the host of the party to be able to see all these things. So if you are willing and obedient, and because that process is going to be, it's, it's not an easy process. You need to be humble. For God to walk on you. James chapter 4 verse 6. James chapter 4 verse 6. Can we read these scriptures together everybody? The Bible says, But he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God does what? God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Verse 10 of this same scripture. Verse 10. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And he will do what? He will lift you up. He will lift you up. He will lift you up. It will only take a humble person to be submitted to somebody like me. Do you get what I'm saying now? Because me, I am already humble. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it will take a humble person to submit. Because a, the process of humility is not easy. People that are humble, they are already dead to themselves. It's only somebody that is dead to himself or herself that God can lead. When you still have your own understanding, I'm sorry, God cannot lead you. And if God cannot lead you, it will be difficult to come to that point of restoration. If God cannot lead you. It will be difficult to come to that point. Hallelujah. So the scripture says... He restores my soul and leads me in the path of righteousness. So, if you are, if you find yourself still struggling with being right with God, it's because you have not been restored. That's why. Because the Bible did not make mistake by saying, He restores my soul and He leads me. Because the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 2 that it is not of works. Let anyone should what should boast. It's not by you trying to, no, but you are trying, you are doing that because you are not restored. 
to what God wants you to be. And I know by the special grace of God, this month, God will restore you. God will restore me. God will restore all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Stop struggling. That scripture as I close this morning. Ephesians chapter 2. Eight, and then we we'll just check Psalms, uh, Psalms three, verse three again after the scripture. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is the gift of God. Verse nine. Verse nine. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Not of works. Then verse ten now. For we are in workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before and that we should walk in them. It's only somebody that is restored that can walk in the plans that God has for him. It's only God. So if you see yourself struggling, I'm back in Psalm 3 verse 3. If you see yourself struggling to cope with God, to walk with God, to walk with God, there is walking with God and there is walking with God. It's better you don't even walk for him, but walk with him. Because in fact, if you have entered the party and you have introduced yourself, you have met with the host of the party, then the host of the party, because he now knows you or is beginning to know you, he will be the one to give you an assignment and say, go and join those people serving food. Go and join those people dancing. Not that when you are doing those things on your own, without being known by the host of the party. And that is why most of us struggle with the things that we do. So he, he, he restores my soul and leads me in the path of righteousness. Shall we rise on our feet this morning? I don't know what you are struggling with. I have my own struggles as well. But I, you are going to pray this morning that Lord I surrender. You know, on Friday, uh, we were looking at these scriptures in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. You know, Joshua told uh, the people to go to fight the city of Ai. The city of Ai was a very small city. I think about the smallest city that he ever fought with. Told them to go and fight the people of Ai and all that. But he didn't know that there was something wrong that has been committed. Achan stole something. And do you know that they went to that city and those people defeated them? The smallest tweet. The smallest one. So I wanted to pray to God this morning. Sometimes we act in ignorance of the things that we don't know. And it affects our lives. I wanted to pray to God this morning and say, Lord, I receive grace from you today to be humble. I receive grace from you today to learn of the things that I don't know. I receive grace from you today to always ask you before I take my steps. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and be praying. Go ahead and be praying. And if you are here, you have never surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You've never come to accept the works of salvation. He came to die for us, for your sin, for my sin, for the sin of the world. But you still need to come to accept what he has done so that you are free forever. So that you are free forever. If you are here like that this morning, I want you to uh, make sure that you are talking this right now to God and say, Lord, please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. Or if you are watching online this morning, I want you to pray to God and say, Lord, come into my heart. I want to be free so I can also be restored. So that I can be restored. I want to be free, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Just one prayer point. As I take my leave from this place, the prayer point is this. If you are here, you want to give your life to Christ, please kindly wait to see me after service. If you made that decision here this morning. Hallelujah. Now, this is the prayer we are going to pray. You are going to call the name of Jesus. That's why I was telling us to call Jesus in the beginning. I don't know where you want to be restored in your life. I don't know what you want God to. We've seen that the prayers of restoration is the prayers of healing. Is the process of strengthening. Is the process of refreshing. So I wanted to call the name of Jesus. Call him like that blind Bartimaeus. 
in Luke chapter 18. He kept on calling Jesus. They kept telling him, shut up. Keep he kept on calling him. I wanted to pray to God this morning and say, Jesus, restore me, restore my soul. Your soul is actually you as a person. That's what soul means. So begin to pray this morning and say, Jesus, restore me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray for yourself. And say, Lord, restore me this morning. Restore me this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore me, Father, this morning in the name of Jesus. Restore me, Jesus. Restore me, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore me this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore me this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. Restore me this morning, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, restore me, O oh God. Restore me in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore me. So you can lead me. So I can be led by you in the path of righteousness. For your name's sake. Because I carry your name. Lord I release myself to you O God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name. We have prayed. Father we just thank you for this wonderful morning. We give you all the praise. Lord God we pray this morning. We want you to restore us indeed. Father please restore us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, in your own way of doing things, everyone that is hurt in this place, Father, heal their heart in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is hurt internally in the place of emotions, Father, please heal their heart in the name of Jesus. Anyone watching online that is hurt, Father, please heal their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Every other inabilities that we have, Father, please heal us, O God. Restore us in the name of Jesus. Physical sickness, spiritual sickness, emotional sickness, mental sickness. Lord, heal us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us that grace, Lord. We know that your grace is sufficient, Lord. Help us to be humble enough to access your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for the Lord this morning.